and lose principal. So Absolutely. they have to know that they're, it's not FDIC insured. No, it's not. That, no, I, yeah. and that, my, my yeah, intention. I think you meant to say it was liquid. It's, li- it's liquid, and my intention is this, that you know, there are certain investment products that have a thing called a surrender fee on them, okay? And those surrender fees can stay around for a year, two, three, four, up to seven years. So before you make that decision, I'm saying I'm not saying that doesn't work, but maybe for a portion of portfolio it does. Sure. But some people sit there, I'm going to lock all this money up. Um, like you know, it happens a lot with retirees. Here's my million dollars. Okay, I put it in four different annuities. Some surrender very soon, in the next year and a half, and some surrender mm-hmm. four or yeah. seven years down the road. Um, hey, that's great. Is that what you want? I just want to make sure yeah. the listing audience yeah. understood that. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, point get, get, your money. Getting your money back is important when you discuss investing because um, in the end, things do happen. I mean. I, one thing I discuss about financial plan is I can write you a beautiful financial plan and it's going to be outdated in five years. That's what we need to update. Oh, I remember the old days, you know, $5,000 plans. Uh, yeah. You're going to have exactly 3.2 kids in exactly 6.4 years based right. on blood. And it's like, oh, come on, stuff is useless. Right, totally. And that's the biggest thing you run into is there's extraordinary expenses that occur in retirement. Things you might change. need a new roof. You might need a new yeah. car. Uh, I have some clients, their kids move back in with them. You know, their, their financial situation has changed and this economy has done it to, to a lot of us. And it's unfortunate, but... 8.1% unemployment and low interest rates. Uh, Lou, you've got something about quantitative easing three. Well, I wanted to talk about that. Sounds like a disease. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to talk to listeners about all this, all these headlines out there about quantitative easing, what it is, and, and the process involved, um, and how the, it might affect the markets in general. Um, you know, many investors are now wondering, you know, what's next? Should I cal- allocate holdings, take advantage of the Fed buying one item over and over again? So, Mark, to your business, this is what happened with treasuries. They just start buying treasuries all the time. It floods the market, keeps interest rates very low. Um, but the net effect of this money printing or money contracting business that the, the Fed's in, uh, you know, the economic conditions are weak, and they're just basically saying, hey, look, we need hiring to occur, and we need a certain part of the economy to kind of get on track, and that part of the economy is housing. So um, it's strange, though. We are borrowing money so other people will spend it kind of like what the political candidate was talking about earlier. So that's a little bit of a problem because the government over time will lose its valuation. When you print too much money, sure, you lose value. So um, more inventories out there. Um, now the good news is mortgage-backed securities are what's you know isolated to be purchased, which is great news um, because now we have a ready market for you know mortgage rates to stay low. People are going to keep on buying those. Basically the government $40 billion a month for a while. They also said we're not going to raise interest rates till 2015. 15, yeah. Low interest rates are around for a while. So um, these bonds already yield between 1% and 2%. So I don't know how much lower they can go. It's kind of like treasuries, how much lower they can go. Um, when you calculate inflation, are you really getting any return? And, and that that I don't know. It's, that's kind of a tough question because we don't know where inflation is going. But right now, commodities are low, so inflation is in place, mostly because China is a little bit unstable and weak. But a lot of people, you know, everything's based on alternatives. So people are thinking, well, if I don't get 1%, uh, but I want to keep my principal, right. where should I invest? And then exactly. of course they talk to Mark and find out they can earn, you know, pretty conservatively eight percent interest yeah. and they go, yeah. Holy smokes. <laughs> well, so let's, hang on a second, Lou, let's let's break this down for a second. So um, interest rates are already low, mortgage rates are, are you know, three and a half percent. So what is what's the practical goal of, of Bernanke in doing this new round of quantitative easing? What's, what, is, what, are we, what is he hoping is going to happen specifically in, in the marketplace? Well, I think that the last quantitative one and two you refer to as stimulus. That's money that's injected directly into the, into the economy. And what, what they're doing here specifically is they're saying we want mortgage rates or housing to remain stable or go up. They're really nervous that, you know, because from an employment tool, I think there, there's stats out there, like I know in the automotive industry, one out of every six people is in the automotive industry. Look at housing between, you know, what you do, mm-hmm. uh, conventional mortgage lenders, uh, inspectors, salespeople, and the turnover of real estate, people who improve it and employ so much of this country, they think it could be a driver to really bring impl- uh, unemployment down. Now, if she should ask a question, because the, the one point I wanted to make, if I can jump there real quick, sure. is, you know, he kind of telegraphed this move. He's like, there's only he certain, okay. yeah, there's only certain things I can do. But what he's really done here in, in, the, in the depths of everything, politically, he's put a ton of pressure on Congress, the Senate, and the President, saying it's your problem now. I've done my job. You guys keep on beating me up to do something. I've done it in a conservative fashion because it's just regulated to the mor- mortgage industry and to you know telegraph the fact that interest rates won't go up till 2015. So now it's like, okay. The next step is yours. If we fall off this fiscal cliff, if you raise the tax on dividends, the tax on capital gains, whatever you might do, these are your decisions to make. I'm not, he's not a political animal. He's completely independent. 
but it's now their job to get us over the hurdle. That's why the next, you know, 100, even after election, election 150 days are so critical to all these decisions we make, you know, how, how companies will invest, how a lot of things will occur. I was surprised to hear that st statistic about one out of every six people is in the automotive type industry. And right. I know you're not talking about just building cars. And no, it has to do with everything. Yeah. Well, I wonder what it is for real estate. Oh, it's you. I didn't see even. I didn't even see even well, and, and, and so just to get back to, you know, what's the goal? Is the goal that banks are going to make more loans? Is that banks going to make lending easier? Because I, I don't see, and I'm not hearing that getting a bank loan is going to get easier. And I don't see or hear that banks are going to start making loans to. Uh, real estate investors to buy investment property again. So I'm wondering what's just good you know, for you. Yeah. Where, where's the stimulus happening? I mean, right, right. That, that, no, that's a great point. So, right, there's less people qualifying for loans. There's still people in foreclosure or loan modifications mm -hmm. and all these programs that, that are basically are not working. That, that's real estate that's not working. Um, but again, back to the point, that's on the political side of the spectrum. They need to regulate banks so that they do start lending, they still do start making things happen. They have to uh, lower some of the restrictions that are out there uh, with some of these um, banks. You know, it's, their capital requirements are a little high. Um, things need to be fixed. Remember, AIG still owned a lot by the government. You know, there's a lot of things that are still owned by the government. So he's saying like this is this is going to bring a calmness. Everyone's going to settle. It's not going. It's not a hey, let's jump in. Like two, remember 2010 when this happened, everybody jumped into the market because that was regular stimulus. That stimulus that goes throughout the whole economy. He's saying mortgage rates will be low. As things get fixed, like unemployment, like the tax policy, like these things, we know the mortgage system will be attacked, so housing will continue on the trajectory of rising steadily. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown, wishing you the best of investing. So long. <laughs>